to Truth and Grace with John and Mark. In this podcast, we tackle difficult issues related to living, loving, and leading in a broken world. Today's episode is about creating a positive holiday season. Welcome back to Truth and Grace with John and Mark. Always great to be with my buddy John. How you doing, man? I am doing fantastic, Mark. How are you doing today? Doing well. Good. Colorado Springs, we it is snowing. <laughs> It is not. We're, you do not live in Florida anymore. No, no cult, culture shock. Uh, so yeah, I am not in Florida anymore. No more beaches on Christmas. Right? No, I, I just got back from a big trip, but I was in Asia, and it was eighty degrees and humid. And Amy had three inches of snow on the ground. I'm like, wow, this is ridiculous. I will say, I would take the three inches of snow <laughs> on the ground over the hot and humid. Yeah, exactly, because yeah. that was their winter. The that 80 was... degrees. <laughs> okay. Yeah, right. exactly. All right. So we're coming up on the holidays here. Okay. Everybody's excited about Christmas. Uh, before we get into like the, the fun stuff of we're going to talk about some good stuff today. All right. <laughs> but before we d- dive deep into that, fam- favorite Christmas movie? Well, there's a lot of good ones out there, but I have one ultimate favorite, and this is terrible because I'm like I've been a missionary pastor for years. Man, Elf is just <laughs> such a good movie. Uh, my my favorite scene is like he's an angry, a, he's an angry <laughs> Elf. Right? So so, anyways, and there's parts of it that it just loses me, but there are some really funny parts in Elf. So yeah. not not very spiritual uh, 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 of an answer, but Elf is is uh, got his. Uh, yeah, good I points. agree. I mean, you stole mine. That's yeah. my, my, that, for me. That's like number one, and it's a big gap between that and then the other ones yeah you know i I like the i think but this take kind of takes us to what we're talking about because Mm. we all know that comedy laughter is one of the major things that makes a holiday joyful Yeah. yeah i mean i know for myself i think probably the sound i love the most is the sound of my kids in a room laughing with each other Absolutely. I mean, that is just the favorite sound in the world to me. And so, Mm -hmm. you know, having them together to do that, we hope that'll happen this Christmas, you know, but holidays can also bring, you know, they bring emotions. (laughs) And sometimes those emotions are really good and sometimes they're really bad. What what was the book we all read? It was the best of times and it was (laughs) the the worst worst of times. times. Yeah. Yeah. And sometimes that's on the same day. Yeah. (laughs) (laughs) I think that describes my childhood holidays, actually. So, yeah. Well, we want to just start off by just jumping right in with this whole thing about holidays and how do we create a positive experience. And so part of how we create a positive experience is also how do we mitigate stress? Yeah. So let's just jump right in. What's your first like go to on how do we create a positive experience for the holidays? Yeah. You know, I'm, I'm jumping right from buddy on elf uh, <laughs> to probably something that's a little bit more spiritual, but I, I think it, it begins with putting things in the right perspective perspective. Mm. I think that when you can come back and you can go, Christmas is about the birth of Christ, and you can get focused on that and the meaning of that, then all of the trappings around it can become maybe less stressful. I think that the stress has come because you're trying to please every, especially if there's some ladies that are watching and trying to, you know, cook the meals and make sure that the tree looks perfect and the all the presents are perfect. It, it just adds stress. And I think that if you can just stop for a moment and go, you know what? All those things need to happen uh, in the right time and order, but put the perspective, put Christ in the center of Christmas, mm. and then and then really have that attitude of like, hey, we're going to have a family time that's fun. If everything works out perfect, if the gravy's a little burnt, who really cares at the end of the day? My wife. Your wife. <laughs> your wife. That's and my wife would. <laughs> but I'm just saying that, it, like, uh, really, if, if you could just go, man, let's have fun and let's be together. It's like weddings. You know, I've done several weddings. And I start off by going, Listen, I'm just going to tell you right now, something is going to go wrong. Sure. And if, that, if you let that annoy you, it'll ruin the day. Okay. But if you can keep your mindset on this is really what this what this day is about and keep it in perspective, it just makes the day so much nicer. Oh, absolutely. I, yeah. I found that 
if I can make a distinction and, you know, Amy works hard on this. If you make a distinction between entertaining yep. and showing hospitality, yep, those are two very different things. If your focus is on entertaining, then everything has to be perfect. Yep. If your goal is just to simply show hospitality, to be hospitable, then you're, you're willing to tolerate a whole lot. <laughs> you know, I know we have perfectionists that watch. And if you're watching and you're a perfectionist, I just want to say I thank God that I – when it comes to holidays, because there, there's there's just no way everything can be so perfect. And then when you try to do that, it just – it can, if you're not careful, it can just sap all of the joy out of Christmas. And listen, if there is one day out of the year that should be about the joy that a Savior has come to take away the sins of mankind, I mean, it should be a day filled with joy. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Now, you bring family together. <laughs> you know, you, you, some sometimes you got, yeah. I think every family has a crazy uncle or, <laughs> you know, or so, somebody who likes to provoke and cause trouble somehow, Some you know. How do you deal with that person? Well, actually, in our family, we were always looking for a normal uncle. If we could just no, I'm just joking. I actually listen for anybody watching. I have family members that watch. I love my family, and I love my mom, and I love my dad separately. They are amazing, <laughs> but I think you've heard the stories. I mean, between myself and my wife, we've got like 13 marriages among our parents. So there is a lot of brokenness. So, mm. but like separately, I love each of them dearly, but together. I I mean, Christmas and holidays was this. It was arguing. It was fighting. Mm. It was the greatest days of sorrow and tears. And then it could also be the, my greatest memories in life. So it's a lot of emotions. Yeah. And how you navigate through those emotions are pretty important. Wouldn't you, wouldn't you agree? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. I mean, I, I you know, I, I'm an only child, so my house was always quiet. <laughs> I mean, always quiet. And my my. Dad worked a lot and was, a, you know, and then was a bivocational pastor. Mm. So, you know, I mean, really, our house was just quiet all the time. And so when we would go to family at Christmas time, well, if we go to my dad's family, because that was the side that had like a lot of uncles and aunts and all that, yeah. man, they were loud. <laughs> you know, <laughs> and I just wanted to kind of like go hide in the corner. You know, <laughs> actually, I think I spent a lot of time outside, so yeah. it enjoyed that part of it. But yeah, yeah I, you know, I, I do think that's important, though. Even as a kid, what I was practicing was a coping mechanism. Yeah, and I think that that's important. Yeah, you know that we, you know, the, the scriptures are so rich with you know a, a gentle word. A gentle answer turns away wrath, mm -hmm. you know, and I think sometimes it's important that we realize, look, we're, we're together for a day. Yeah. This is not the day to try to convince somebody of my political point of view or my <laughs> whatever, you know, just practice wisdom. Sometimes just keep your mouth shut. <laughs> for one day. You can for do it for one day. Mark says, for one day, I can keep my mouth shut, right? <laughs> well, but think about the consequences. Yeah. Yeah. You know, it's really a sign of maturity. You know, have, have, has, your family, has your family ever been at places I know with my family? Like, I mean, and, and people get into political discussions, <laughs> football discussions. I mean, just name the, the you know, and then and we're and then we're where emotions start to get heightened. And it just gets really awkward, and everybody's like, "Could I grab my plate and go to the <laughs> living room?" <laughs> oh yeah, we've got people in our family who are very blue, and some who are very red. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, and you know, fortunately, it's funny. Like one of our children who will actually be the one who'll say, "We need to stop this conversation right now." Right. I mean, it's funny that it comes from a child. You know, it's not really a child. He's a young adult. But he'll be the yeah. one to say, this is only going to go bad. Yeah. Let's just stop talking about this. Yeah. You know, and, and it's and it's really that's the wise approach in yeah. that context. And, you know, for me, and not just on Christmas, I think that what happens is Christmas and holidays, it just tends to heighten what already we're 
where our emotions are at already yeah. so that when you come into holidays. So one thing that I like to just go into, if I know we're, we're going to have a large family gathering and we're every family is the same. We have, you know, every personality is represented there. You just kind of have to see the tapestry of life. You've got to be able to look around and appreciate people. And, you know, who really determines what's normal and abnormal? <laughs> so, you know, we'll, we'll probably get to heaven and be like the people we thought were abnormal. <laughs> we're actually the more normal people, you know, uh, or, or should have been. So sometimes you just have to take a moment, uh, maybe have a little bit of self-introspection and go, why is it that I am getting so heightened? Why am I allowing Absolutely. allowing this person or that person to aggravate? Why can't I just appreciate people for who they are? Yeah, no, I agree 100 percent. You know, yeah. modern psychological terminology terminology focuses on this word trigger. Yeah. You know, well, why am I letting this person trigger me? You yeah. know, why is, you know, and I think that's, if you think, if, if you think about what's in your sphere of control, which yeah. is really your mouth, <laughs> <laughs> you can't control what anybody else in the room does, yeah. but you can control your, and then all of a sudden you have a different bar of success, right? you know, and I think that can really help people. Yeah. So we all probably have that one person at holidays that we go you know, that's in our family or that maybe we don't see very often. And we go, you know, and you can almost get tense just knowing that you're going to have that interaction. Oh. So uh, <laughs> make sure you got your trigger in the right place. right? <laughs> don't pull the trigger. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So in your family, how how do you keep with all the stresses and everything that sure. happens during the holidays? How do you keep your focus intentional on Christ, because it's easy to say. It. We all go to church and we say it, sure. and every pastor goes, "Oh, you know, remember the reason for the season." But then there's the reality of when you actually start to walk through the days. Sure. So, what what do you do that helps you to navigate through the holiday season in a peaceful, joyful way? Yeah, that's a good question. Really practically. You know, one of the things that helped me, now this has nothing to do with anything spiritual. <laughs> well, I guess it does in one sense. And that is definitely a principle from Proverbs. But years ago, I started paying early in the year into an account for Christmas. Like Amy and I early mm -hmm. on decided how much do we want to spend on mm -hmm. every person. And we went through person by person by person. How much money do we want to spend? We want to be as generous as we can. And we said, so we set aside an amount. And so by probably March, April, May at the latest, we've got our Christmas fund fully funded. And so wow. when Christmas comes, I mean, one of the biggest stresses of Christmas is finances. Yep. And so all of a sudden when that, it, when that stress is not there, yep. oh man, it just frees me up. Because then I can enjoy, you know, and, and you're not, if, if you wait till the last minute, most of, a lot of people will end up putting stuff on credit cards. Mm. And, the, and the sad reality is a lot of times people will spend more on a credit card than they would have spent if they had the cash saved. Yeah. So, you know, I think if you can, that's a very practical way for me, you know, to eliminate stress as the year goes on is by in, thinking about it from even from January. Yeah. Well, and one of the, one of the challenges can be I know for us, you know, because we do come from broken families, so then we have you know, mm. mothers and fathers and stepmothers and stepfathers. So, so now instead of just two, it's four, mm. and then all of the family that comes along with it. So, I know it's really important for us to set a budget about what we want to spend. It sounds like you're a lot better than what I am when it comes <laughs> to buy. You know, being a pastor for years too, it's just the busiest time sure, of, of the year. So we have all these extra services and things, and then you're trying to, you know, get the time off to, you know, go and and and, and purchase things. But I, I agree with you. The earlier you can start and then plan financially, so you don't wind up having to pay that on credit cards for, you know, three or four months beyond that has to be a huge uh, stress reliever. Yeah, it is for us. And, you know, and the flip side of that is I know people who don't practice those things yeah. and it creates so much stress. Yeah. And of course, we know the number one reason for divorce in America is finances. Yeah. Hey, and you know, for, for and for people that may be just watching it, every, everybody has different financials. There's going to be some people that watch and finances aren't really an issue to them. 
But, you know, maybe for some people that are a little bit more tight with their budgets, maybe to just, you know, like that, then it becomes really important to put what the season about is about, and it's Christ and the coming of a Savior to take away the sins of mankind. Because when you, it can be a trap nearly to like having to buy all these presents for all these people and then it puts you into debt. I don't think that that's why Jesus came into the, <laughs> to the world, right? To yeah. strap us for debt for six months. And some of my most meaningful gifts are things that my kids have made for me, yeah. you know, that really cost them very little, you know, and so it doesn't have to be about the money, yeah. you know, and I do think if we, if, you know, more and more people, especially since we're, you know, kind of in a time of inflation right now, this coming holiday season, people may not have the money mm-hmm. that they had in the last couple of years. I think it's important in those situations that they set realistic expectations. Yeah. You know, and you're you're not going to earn somebody's love with a Christmas gift. No, that's, that's really And good. you're not going to lose it because of a smaller Christmas gift. And so, you know, a lot of times those are pressures we put on ourselves. So I think just to lower that down, and I'm still expecting a nice gift from you, but, but you know, for everybody I'll, else listening. I will get exactly what I got for you last year. Exactly. <laughs> no, well, I thought you were going to spend twice as much on me this year as you spent I, on me last year. You know what? Three times as much as what I spent on you last year. Just, you know, so, no, that's great. So what, what do you, like, hey, you know, having good holidays, Sometimes you have to be intentional with it. Mm-hmm. So what what do you and Amy do? Are there things that you do that you, you said is, you know, like things that you plan out that you go, hey, this has really helped us to enjoy the Christmas season with our family? Are there things that you do that are traditions or just ways that you approach the holidays that yep. help to really make it a joy for everybody? That yeah, I mean, you know, this year is going to be different because this will be the first time in a long time that we haven't lived with some family basically nearby. Yeah. Uh, so this year, I think we'll have some family who will come and join us uh, for Christmas, but it won't be near the size that it has been the last few years. Yeah. Uh, and so that'll be different. Mm-hmm. Um, but at least our kids and maybe one set of parents will be here. So we always, you know, like we usually watch a movie, like yeah. a couple of, you know, like every night. We'll watch some sort of Christmas movie. So you watch Elf every night, do you? <laughs> we try to accommodate everybody's taste. <laughs> um, so, you know, we'll we'll do that. You know, for us, you know, we have people at different – this is, you know, an, a topic we need to address in this. But mm-hmm. we have people at different places in their spiritual life yep. that are part of this. And yet, you know, Christmas, its primary purpose is Christ. Yep. And – we don't want this to be a time where, you know, the someone who's not where we are spiritually is dreading yeah. being with us because they're afraid they're going to have something shoved down their throat. At the same time, we want to make sure that Christ is, is as central as our in on that day as he is in every other day of our lives. Yeah. And which is at the center of everything we do. But one of the things we do is every Christmas morning. Before we do anything else, we read the Christmas story. Oh, nice. You know, and it's just a time when we re- reflect on it. <clears throat> even even a, we'll talk about what we're thankful for. Mm-hmm. You know, you don't have to be a, you don't have to be a Christ follower to be thankful for stuff. Yeah. And it's a common place of commonality for us. And, and it just tends to be a, um, you know, it's a way for us to make Christ center, to remind people others of that and yet in a way that isn't um they don't feel ganged up on yeah and this is probably something that we need to talk about in in another podcast but i think you would agree with this shoving anything down somebody's throat it rarely if ever works and that's from selling a refrigerator yep. And then particularly when it comes to Christ, uh, the best place that you're positioned to share your faith that somebody will embrace it is when you just authentically love Jesus and you just let it flow out of the way you serve and love and care and exalt Christ. And when you have prayer times, whatever it is. I have found that to be so effective. I've I've been in in, uh, shared holidays with people that are atheists Mm -hmm. that would come up. And, ha- and have an engagement 
just because they feel like the, you're somebody that's real and authentic about their faith. Yeah. And for a lot of people, they've never really engaged with that. So shoving shoving it down their throat, just just say it across the board. That never works. Yep. Just let the life of Jesus flow. And you know what? You, you do that in a natural way, and the Holy Spirit will open up the right doors and places to be able to share yeah. those things when the timing you know, is, is right. You know, we did an episode not too long ago on natural ways of evangelism. Mm, yeah. And in that, I think I mentioned this, but one of the things that definitely applies at Christmas is this principle that love and laughter melt the hardest heart. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You know, if you, if you can intentionally create a context where there is love that's demonstrated and then laughter taking place, it is just hard to not yeah. enjoy that yep. kind of context. And when you're enjoying something, you're not as defensive. Yeah. And if you can't enjoy yourself at Christmas, if you can't love and laugh at Christmas, you may want to go check out your spiritual <laughs> thermometer there. Because, I mean, this is the time of year that it should just overflow in our lives. Sure. I mean, you're in a place where you have this really nice meal. You have in this place where you're, you know, sharing gifts, sharing love. And like you're saying, finding those places. What do you guys do? White elephant or gift exchanges or just, we, just yeah, pick I mean, out we, special things? We our family is relatively small, yeah. so it's small enough that basically everybody gives everybody yeah. a gift, you yeah. know, so it, it, you know, both sets of parents are still alive and still with each other, you yeah. know, and so, and then, you know, we have four kids and one daughter-in-law and then, you know, sometimes Amy's sibling, her sister, she only has one sister, you know, so we just don't have a huge family. Yeah. And so it's small enough that we can, we can, you know, give everybody, yeah. every, everybody can get a gift. And, but I realize in bigger families, you can't do that. Yeah. You know, then you just have to say, look, we're going to either exchange names, you know, or whatever. Yeah. yeah. And, and, you know, if, if it can be, if you can give nice gifts, wonderful. Yeah. But that's not what this is about. 100 percent. Yeah, you know. I agree with you. Yeah. So um, any story you want to share related to like just Christmas that was meaningful to you? Like what were the components around that story that made that a meaningful Christmas? Yeah. You know, um, when I was a kid, my my uh, grandparents uh, lived in East Tennessee, mm -hmm. uh, both my granny, which I've talked about her at mm -hmm. times. And then my, my mamaw and papaw, they lived on a farm. So mm. everything was just natural, mm. you know, food things. And, sure. uh, but they were not wealthy. It was a small house and everybody would come there. Mm -hmm. So we would get sometimes 30, 30, 35 people in what was less than a thousand square foot of a wow. house. And they had a porch and everybody would just get together. The meals would be so great. The love would just overflow. That's great. Uh, I mean, those are the, you know, those are the, the cool times. If you got lucky, uh, you'd get snow. Uh, <laughs> we weren't always lucky. East Tennessee. You yeah, kinda, that kind of, that part of the yeah. country, it could be 75 or 25. <laughs> you just yeah, never know. You never know. <laughs> so, but that those are always times for me that were great. But it was funny because like, when I say the best of times and the, and the worst of times, um, so uh, we would have, I mean, in our family, we would have some of the biggest arguments that would take place <laughs> in the holidays. I don't know if that ever, you know, I know you came from a, you know, you're an only child, but man, the arguments that would take place with cousins and my parents, and <laughs> it was, you know, we had some, some doozies. <laughs> well, you know, one of the things that helps now, especially when we were growing up, you know, you had three TV channels and, you know, yeah. that was it. Now you've yeah. got 24 seven, so you can distract yourself with, you know, football on you know, there you Christmas go. Everybody Day. has their <laughs> smartphone and they're like, you know, tink, tink, you know, they've got, so they can amuse themselves yeah. if it starts to get awkward. So, exactly. Yeah. Hey, before we wrap up today's episode, we would be remiss to remind people that, you know, just as we've talked about the fact that, you know, this is Christ is at the center yeah. of all this. This might be a time of the year mm. where if handled appropriately, people might be willing to have a Jesus conversation that they might not have been willing to have at other times. Yeah. Um, 
I know your church has done through the years when you were a pastor, you did outreaches at Christmas time. Mm-hmm. Help walk us through that. What kind of advice would you give to the people in your church when you were trying to encourage them to reach out at the Christmas season? Yeah, you know, Mark, uh, probably two times out of the year, one one is right around Easter and the other one is Christmas, where people are actually really open to either going to church or to spiritual things. And, you know, depending on what your demeanor is, mm-hmm. I've, I've found that like we, we would always have either a Christmas Eve service, uh, sometimes even a Christmas day when we lived in Ireland uh, as missionaries every Sunday, you know, what, whatever Christmas day was that morning, mm-hmm. we would have a church service. Mm-hmm. But if your relationships are good and your friendships are good and you're sharing the love of Christ, it's a whole lot easier to go, hey, why don't you go to church with me? Sure. And then when when we would get to church, of course, there would be just incredible, you know, ways of witness. Um, and then sometimes it wouldn't work out that way. But it, it's just, I think, looking for those God moments in those times to go, hey, Lord, uh, here's a place that you're opening hearts. If if it does not move you, that uh, God in all of His glory sends his son to be born not in a palace but in a stable in the most humble of circumstances uh, to be the king of kings and the lord of lords to to take away our sin if that doesn't move your heart yeah then then you don't probably don't have a pulse and if somehow you can translate that story into what it looks like in the in the life of a believer and you can show those qualities of the life of Christ and let them see it living and in action i think that the chances of people engaging with you and wanting to hear the message it, it becomes far greater. Yeah, and so I, I would probably say there's a lot of people that are watching today that are going to have some of those opportunities. And I was just wondering, Mark, maybe you would close us in prayer and maybe pray for some of the people that are watching today, whether they uh, maybe they just have a home that's maybe broken, mm. or uh, there's people that are facing divorce. Mm. There's people that are vo- uh, facing really difficult situations in their family or alone. Um, you know, maybe you would just pray as they're walking through this season that it really would be a season where the joy and the love of God overflows, that maybe those opportunities to share mm. faith with people that would never darken the church, but now they have the opportunity because they're engaging with with, with individuals that are watching mm. to share the love of God. Amen. Would you do that for us? Father, thank you so much for just to start with the fact that Christmas exists because it flowed out of your heart. Lord, that uh, you gave us the greatest gift. You, you, you know, though Christ was rich, he became poor so that we could exchange our poverty for spiritual richness. Lord, we thank you for that. Thank you for the gospel. Lord, the, the, from the baby's birth in the manger, the cross was always on the Father's heart so that we could be redeemed. So, Lord, we that's what we bring into this Christmas season. We bring the joy of salvation into it. Lord, we also reminded of the fact that, Lord, we're going to be in a lot of contexts where our patience will be tried, our joy will be tried, our love will be tried. Help us to rely deeply on the Holy Spirit, Lord, during those times, Lord. Lord, we pray for those who are hurting during the Christmas season. I think pray particularly for uh, children. Lord, who are in homes that are either broken, uh, where there's a lot of stress, or homes that where there's just so much anger, and they're caught up in that, Lord. As John said earlier, the, these can be the best of kind of days, or they can be the worst of days. And so, Lord, we pray for just the peace of Christ, Lord, that would fill homes across this nation. Lord, we ask that you would bless uh our families and the families of every person who's listening to us and that they might make Christ the center of this season in whose name we pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you for joining us today. Hope you've enjoyed our time together. We do want to ask you to join us next week where we will deal with the very important topic of loneliness. This can be, you know, a this is a wonderful time of the year, but it can also be a time of darker emotions. And so we're going to address that next week in our podcast. In the meantime, if you enjoy the content, be sure to share it, like it, do everything you can to get the message out. And we look forward to having you back with us next week.
Thanks so much for joining us. We know your time is valuable and we're so thankful you chose to spend it with us. The Christmas season looks different for everyone. So next week, John and Mark will be back to talk about the emotions that come up around Christmas. We'll see you then.